the simple things in life. It's saying a simple life, uh, is if it has love, it's better. A simple life, if it has wisdom, is better. Now, it's nice to have both, wisdom and honor and riches and all those. But if you have to choose between one or the other, it's best to choose simplicity with honor and wisdom. A wise son brings joy to his father, according to verse 20, and an apt reply brings joy to both speaker and hearer, according to verse 23. Folly may be the joy of the one who lacks heart, but a cheerful look brings uh, the heart joy. Yes, yes, we can give people joy, but we also need to receive joy. The tongue of the wise makes knowledge good, just as the happy heart makes good the face, and the good heart has a continual feast. We have to have love in this world and joy, and God wants it for us. Like a timely or a good word and good news that brings health, the better life of moderation and love is also called good. The eyes of God keep watch on the wicked and the good. God finds any incursion of evil, it looks like an evil little child, that would spoil the good. He finds this detestable. It's an abomination to him because the, the good is being destroyed. God wants the best for you. God wants joy in your life. God wants you to have love. But any kind of evil will hurt that particular love. This is why God hears the prayer of the righteous and, de- and detests the prayer of the wicked. Because he, they, the wicked are destroying what is good. Their way of folly spoils and ruins this world. That's a goat chewing on its ribbon. Uh, <laughs> goats are stupid. And they just destroy everything that's in their path. God wants us to enjoy the good things of this world and not uh, destroy them. As the Proverbs tell us more and more about God and his intentions and desires, we find ourselves wanting the same things. We want what God has, and it will make our life good. This is a picture of George Vanderbilt, one of the wealthiest people of the the 19th century. He built this huge uh, home that's now a hotel, I think, uh, in North Carolina, and he invited all of his rich friends. And, you know, I have this impression that all rich people are snobs and jerks and idiots. But he wasn't, from what I understand. Uh, he, uh, his his uh, house hired Bessie Smith to be a, a waitress at, in all these fancy parties that, that he did. And the first time she was out uh, serving, she had a huge serving tray, and she, she walks into the room and drops it all over the floor. And you know how people are. You know, we all look, we all stare, we all make fun, we're all, they're all laughing. Well, Vanderbilt didn't do any of that. He got up, he walked over, got down on his knees, and started helping her pick the stuff up. You know, in front of all of his rich friends, in front of all those snooty people. He was willing to be humble. He was willing to be righteous in that situation and helped her. And then he said something I'm sure that terrified her. He said, why don't you come and see me tomorrow? Ah! <laughs> but what he did the next day was he gave her a different job. He says, you know, I could see that you couldn't handle that big tray. What, what, we have other jobs here. Why don't you do this job? He was willing to get to know her. He was willing to figure out her strengths and weaknesses. He was willing to help her. Wisdom does that. Wisdom is humble. It works on the good things of life. And it takes care of the people that are less uh, able than we are. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for pointing us in the direction of wisdom. And we ask that you would help us to choose wisdom. Lord, we pray that you would help us to choose it in, in every step that we take. We pray that we would be humble, that we would be nice to people, that we would give, use good words, and that we would consider the outcomes and the consequences of our behavior. Lord, we know that you look at the in, intentions of our hearts, and we ask that you would, you would make those intentions good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.